Today, I thought it would be fun to go over the exact build that I got on my 2023 Subaru Outback Onyx Edition. So I'm gonna show you all the accessories that I picked out specifically for myself and give you some insight on why I chose some of those and also share with you what the cost is associated with those accessories. By the way, we are still waiting for the fix on the 2023 Outback and Legacy. Subaru did announce today as of October 13th that they do have a fix, but they have to send us the part for the fix. The fix is only supposed to take 0.6 hours to complete, so less than an hour to complete. It's just a matter of getting the parts sent to us and getting them installed. At this time, we don't know how many parts we're going to be sent and we don't know when those are exactly going to arrive, but I will keep you guys updated as new information develops. I've ridden bikes for many years and on almost all of my cars, I've always had some sort of roof rack set up to haul my bikes, but I decided to change it up a little bit for my Subaru Outback and get a trailer hitch to mount a trailer hitch bike rack. This is something that I've used in the past on my friend's cars when we traveled to go ride bikes places. And I've always been jealous of the bike rack setup they have on the back because it's so much easier to access your bikes from the rear versus having to lift them up on top of the car. So it'll be nice to use that. And I'll be making a more in-depth video on the bike rack setup that I get to show you guys for those of you who are planning to travel in your Subaru with your bikes. By the way, the lowest cost way to get the trailer hitch is by ordering it on your car from the factory. So if we look here on my window sticker sheet, you'll see that the trailer hitch was $634. Something important to note with that though, is that just because you order it on your car from the factory, unfortunately, doesn't always mean that your car will come with it. Sometimes Subaru is out of these parts for the trailer hitch and therefore they will send your vehicle to your retailer without installing the hitch and you end up having to get it installed at your retailer. The downside to that is then you have to pay a labor cost, which varies from retailer to retailer. But to give you an example, it would cost approximately 350, maybe even 400 bucks to get installed. So you're looking at about a thousand dollars on average for the trailer hitch to get installed at your retailer. Also, I almost forgot if you get a trailer hitch, they will more than likely include this little rubber cap that you can put on the end of the hitch to make it look nicer. So check your glove box, hopefully you'll have this too, and just take it out of the wrapping and pop it in place just like that. Part of the reason I went with the OEM Subaru hitch is because of the ground clearance. Subaru Outbacks have 8.7 inches of ground clearance as a standard. I didn't want to take away from that. And I think this just looks cleaner. So although this OEM hitch is likely more expensive than the aftermarket alternative, it doesn't hang down low and it looks really nice. For the first time ever in the 2023 Outback, you now have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You do not have the wireless charging pad as a standard. And this is the second accessory that I was really excited to add because now that we have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, it now makes sense to have the wireless charging pad. This charging pad has been offered, I believe, since the 2020 model came out, but you've always had to connect your cable to the USB input down here to simultaneously charge your phone and connect to CarPlay. So now it makes more sense than ever to add this as an accessory, something that I thought was really valuable to have and just also really cool to have. Be aware though that your device must be compatible with wireless charging in order to use this. I know with iPhone, you have to have at least an iPhone 10 or newer. I don't know what the Android version is or equivalent is of that. So for my Android users, if you can help us out in the comment section below, let us know which device you have to have at a, as a minimum in order to have the wireless charging capabilities. Let's pop open the hatch now and see what kind of goodies I've got inside of the car. One of the first things I added and one of the first things I always recommend for customers to add on their new Subaru are the all weather floor liners. You will get these carpet liners as a standard on all Subarus, but it doesn't matter what trim level you go with, the all weather floor liners are not a standard. These are a really nice quality. They're kind of rubber, flexible, and they have a little bit of a tray to them. So if you do spill stuff inside your car, both in the front areas and the second row passenger area in the floorboard, these will catch that, keep it contained. That way you can 
take it out, dump it off, wash it off, clean it, whatever you need to do and throw them back in. I'm losing daylight here, but here is what the all weather liners look like installed on the front driver side area. And I'll also show you what it looks like. Don't mind the dirty car. We're gonna get this nice and cleaned up and ready to go before I take it home. But here's what the second row looks like with the floor mats. The rear cargo area mat right here is a similar material. It's an all weather protection. This is actually standard on all Subaru Outbacks in 2023, even the base model. So in the cargo area, you'll know with the new Outback, you'll always have all weather protection. I didn't have to add the cargo cover because all but the base trim level Outbacks have this cargo cover. If you're curious about what it looked like, this is what it looks like. And there's also a second stage here if you have taller items that you still want to keep covered and out of sight. When you're not using that cargo cover, instead of storing it in your garage or in your attic where you may lose it, you can actually store it down below here. We'll use this little hook here to hold that for us. You can store it down below here. You just pop these little floors up and you Put it in place right here i went ahead and took the cargo cover out because i wanted to show you guys something that is really cool that has been on the outbacks for many years and that is this quick release lever in the rear to drop your second row so this is how you can drop the second row really quick without having to reach up to reach the buttons up here to drop those if you're trying to load from the rear Here's the second row latch I was just talking about. You just press this and it drops the second row if you need to do it from the passenger area. I also decided to go with the rear seat back protectors because whenever we are loading things up here, I wanna make sure that the carpeted material on the backing here is protected. And we're gonna have Cleo in here a lot with her crate. And I just wanna make sure that we can try to cut down on any of these small dog hairs that may get attached to the back of this carpet like Velcro. So by the way, this is Velcroed on and it straps around the headrest just to keep it nice and secure so it doesn't move or go anywhere. The rear seat back protectors can easily be taken off to wash, dry them off and put them back in as necessary if they ever get dirty. This little bag looking thing back here is the cargo net and it unzips just like this. There's little loops here that latch around or loop around these hooks. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. I had to do it off camera because it takes two hands to loop these around these hooks. This is really nice to have, especially if you have the power tailgate because when that power tailgate is opening and this is loaded up with stuff, you can't control stuff from just flopping out onto the pavement. I remember a few years back, we took my sister's Jeep on vacation. She has a power tailgate and we did not have a cargo net. So all of our stuff just fell out as soon as we got to the hotel onto the concrete. Luckily, nothing was damaged or broken, but it did create a bit of a mess. It would have been nice to have something as simple as a cargo net. This also has the, it splits here and has a little pocket. So you can put stuff in there, whether it be groceries, a soccer ball, shoes, whatever you wanna keep contained. So the cargo net is a really nice accessory to add that is simple yet adds a lot of functional purpose. One of the last things I added to the exterior of the car to continue on the cladding are these splash guards. So this is on the end of each of the four wheels up front and in the rear. This is to help prevent rocks or sticks or whatever kind of debris I may be driving over from kicking up and hitting the side or the painted part of my car. I know it's really dirty right now, but this is a really beautiful pearl white color and I wanna keep that as nice as possible. Part of the way I'm gonna protect that is with these splash guards. By the way, you can also get mud flaps that come down much further if you want the more aggressive or more off-roading look but I decided to go with the more subtle appearance. I think it adds a little bit more to the styling characteristics, but also again, serves as a functional purpose. One of the last things I added has to do with this little LED light right here. This is the approach lighting on the passenger side mirror and over there on the driver side mirror. I'm trying to show you guys what this looks like, but I don't know if I can get it to focus. It's actually the Subaru logo. It looks really cool in person. I know it doesn't look like much, but at night this shines down, making it easier for you to see as you're getting in the car. Hence the reason why they call it approach lighting, but it also looks really cool at night because it just adds to the modern touch. It looks sporty, 
it looks cool. So I did add that. By default, by the way, if you add the auto dimming side mirrors with the approach lighting, it will uh, it will make you add the center rear view auto dimming light, which is kind of also a necessity. So on the inside, here is what the interior mirror looks like. This is what I was telling you guys that has to be added whenever you add those auto dimming side mirrors. This is your auto dimming on off switch. So instead of the little lever here, you have an on off switch here. This one also came with the compass and home link so I can sync up my garage door with it. It's not even cold yet and I am so excited to have heated seats. This is how easy the new heated seat controls are. Just one, two, three, you can turn on your heated seats just by simply clicking the touch screen. It's all one touch versus two menus that the previous model had. One other accessory I almost forgot to mention is the rear bumper cover. I decided to add this to keep that top part of the, the painted part of the bumper protected whenever I am pulling things in and out. I know years ago, whenever I had my Volkswagen GTI, I used to load up my car with mine and my friend's bikes and we would be pulling those in and out of the car inevitably somebody's back tire or some piece of metal on the bike would brush across the bumper and it ended up getting scratched up so i want to try to prevent that and keep this paint looking nice maybe you're thinking to yourself well i don't even ride bikes i don't know i don't think i would need that it doesn't mean you have to ride bikes to get this you could be loading and unloading gear or luggage and the wheels on the luggage roll off the back of your bumper and cause scratches or even minute scratches that over time will show up so here is what my window sticker looks like. Here are the accessories. Whenever you order a car, you will always get a window sticker like this and you will see the base MSRP, any of the optional accessories that you added. And down below, you'll see your destination delivery. This is always charged by Subaru. It's not from your dealer. And then your suggested retail price. That is your MSRP. This is the true MSRP that includes your build with the accessories as well as destination delivery so this is the price that you would pay for this particular vehicle with the exact same equipment that is assuming that your local retailer is not charging above msrp i bring that up because there are some dealers who charge above msrp based on the current environment with the supply so look for a dealer hopefully in your area that does not charge above msrp so you can get a good deal on your new car I'll be making another video very soon on my new Onyx Edition covering the standard equipment that make this such a great vehicle and such a great value in my opinion. So stay tuned for that. I will link it up above whenever I make that video. So check that out when it comes out. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. If you found value in this video, please be sure to click the like button, comment below with any questions you have, and I will see you in the next one.